What's up, friends? I'm Henry. That's Jason. And we are finally joined by a very special guest, a guy you've seen on Cold World Training Days. We had him a month or two ago back, and a lot of people were blown away, not just by his shooting ability, but just how special of a young man this guy is. And I'm really happy he's joining us right now, the Syracuse commit, Elijah Moore. What's up, my brother? What's going on? What's going on? Chopper, chopper. What's good? AKA Chopper. All right. Where does Chopper come from? Okay, so growing up, I played all up. Like, I played with, like, people, like, like in my neighborhood that were, like, you know, older brothers to me, kind of. And, uh, you know, my I was young, and I always had the ability to shoot the ball. Like, it just was God-given, along with, you know, the hard work that I played. But, you know, like, I just was always shooting in the park, stuff like that. And so one day, like, you know, it just came, like, something that people said. I, that little kid got the, you know, chop. And then it kind of built from there. And then, you know, once, you know, I was in my neighborhood, everybody was just calling me Chopper, just everywhere I was going. So I just stuck with the name, and then, you know, I kept it. How old were you around that time? I was, like, 9, 10. Wow. Yeah, like 9, 10. Yeah, facts. You had the ratchet for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you see that on his hoodie, which you obviously do, don't forget, and if you like this one as well, Check that link that we have. Shout out Blue Chip. This video and go get yourself one of those support Choppa, support Blue Chip, because they support us. It would mean a lot. But I have questions about Syracuse. We're going to talk a little Jim Beheim. We're going to talk Cardinal Hayes. I know you guys got the championship game coming up this Sunday, but I have to get this one off of my chest. You said you got that ratchet. We know you're a shooter. So, Jason, I have a question for you. If we're doing a three-point shootout, just five – Five shots at each spot around the corner, <laughs> right? Why you look the way, Chopper? I already know. I got. <laughs> he already knows where I'm going with it. He knows me too well for this shit. And if so, five spots around, right? And you, you got, you got to put a thousand dollars on me or him. Who are you taking? For just five shots? Yeah, five shots, like an like an NBA style three point shootout. Me or Chopper, you got to put a thousand dollars on one of us. Who are you taking? And you only get five. Yeah. And y'all just walking in the gym and y'all just gonna start shooting. Both of us in our in our in good form. Yeah, come on, bro. Five out of five. Oh, y'all might go both five for five. You gotta do more shots than that because you can shoot. But Chopper not gonna miss if he's taking five right around. You gotta you gotta be like 25. Maybe he get a few misses in there. Okay. Fair enough. Five, we'll both, both of y'all will go five for five. I can't answer that. For what for what it's worth, I'm betting on myself. Just throwing that out there. A thousand dollars. Listen, I'm ready to make that that happen. Hey, hey just just note to self. I went to work out with Chris Brigley, right? And we did this drill from NBA three point range and had to make five in each spot. So five on the corner, five on the wing, five top of the key, the other wing and other corner. And then it was me and Ian there. And then Ian went and he went like he shot good. Well, they thought he shot good. He went like six. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like 16 or 17 for 25. So as a Chris That's was pretty like, good. Yeah. That's good. Like, where to shoot it, right? And I just laughed. And, and Chris <laughs> looked at me like, like I was sick. I was like, okay. So he passed me the ball. I made the first five. Then I made the second five. Then I, I made the third five. Then I got to the wing. I missed two. Then I made three in a row. Then I got to the corner. I missed... I miss, I miss the second one, and I made all four. At a, a, a and then I so went, went twenty two for twenty five. Yeah, and they they were just looking at me, and like all the rebounders, and Chris was like, oh, and it was shit. that with them. So they was like, they asked me, who's that? He's like, it's my teammate. He's like, oh, word. I'm like, yeah, facts. Wow. Yeah, yeah. They facts. they supposed to see. Listen, man, they be disrespecting the god. Yeah. Playing games, playing games. I, I'll be honest. So I'll I'll say this about you i was a shooter myself right i i that was kind of the only thing i was really good at in the game of basketball if we're being very honest and so because of that i tend to be very critical of guys who are younger than me who i see shooting whether they're in college high school whatever i watch them and i'm like yeah maybe they're a good shooter but you know they weren't me you know i feel that way about a lot of people but i'll be very honest when i saw you shooting in the gym i I was like, this kid could miss a thousand shots in a row and I'm still giving him the next shot just because his form is so natural. Like 
it just very very pure that the trigger is super quick the 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 little things the way you get the 10 feet the 10 toes excuse me squared up to the basket the way that follow through stays that that shot is is very natural jay as a trainer you see that also in him yeah for sure you don't see that too often in many people though cuz yeah. you'll get you'll get real high level guys that once they start missing they change shit up yeah exactly you understand and and, and Chopper know what I'm talking about but at the end of the day if you were a real shooter, nothing switches. Nothing mm-hmm. changes. You do the same thing every time over and over again. And it's going to eventually do what? Go it's in. Gonna, gonna go in. Yeah, so at that rate, you know, a person who could consistently shoot the same way is those guys for me are the ones. And he's definitely that. His, in the shot pocket, everything. Yeah. You feel that way about your, about your jump shot, Chopper? Facts. I mean, you know, I have I have my days just in the gym getting yelled at by my dad. And, and then I miss several times. I start trying to change stuff. He's like, nah, nah, nah. Keep, right. keep missing, and then you're going to make it eventually. And then as time went on, I just, you know, you know, some things that he felt I should change, I was like, nah, I'm going to just shoot like this. And then, you know, just with repetition and, and hours and hours and hours, it was like, all right. So then it became what it is now. And I still have more to go, but yeah. You 17, Chopper. You haven't even filled out yet. Just imagine when you add strength to that. You know where you're going to be shooting from? Dame Town. Yes. Right? Yeah. You understand? Just think about letting it go because nobody's there. <laughs> yeah. So speaking Syracuse, of, can't wait. Speaking of what's to come, uh, the big news, obviously, and first and foremost, a big congratulations from, from myself. I haven't even had a chance to congratulate you, but – you committed to Syracuse, an incredible accomplishment, not just for yourself, but for your family, uh, for all your coaches, for your high school, anyone who's been involved in your in your process. So big congratulations from, from me, obviously from Jason. Uh, but let's talk about Syracuse. Talk, tell me, we spoke about it a little bit before the show, but tell me your, rea- your initial reaction to Jim Beheim's dare I say, sudden retirement yesterday. It was crazy because we had a game yesterday. We have a game. So I'm warming up. I got my blue beats on. I'm working out. I'm getting shots up. And, and Siri reads my messages to me when people text me. So I'm working out, and I get a, a message from a camera guy. He's like, um, if you're going to decommit, if you want to decommit, edit, let me know. <laughs> well, I'm like, I'm like, I shoot. I keep shooting. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I get another one. And this time, there's some guy on Twitter. He's like, um, if you're going to dec- if you're gonna open, reopen your recruitment, let me know so I can be the first one to post it. <laughs> I'm like, what is he talking about? So I go, I'm like, yo, give my phone. I look at my phone, and then oh, everyone sent it to me, like, oh, dude, you know, a whole bunch of questions I'm getting asked. I'm like, right, I would just read this later. So I gave him back my phone. I just put my phone on DD. I kept shooting, and that's how I found out. But I knew it was coming, though. Um, you know, yeah. Coach behind me and him have talked multiple times. I went out there on a visit. You know, he called me after games here and there. You know, I talked to him about sometimes when I'm watching the game myself, when they're playing, and tell him what I think. You know, so me and him have a good relationship. But, you know, I know that, you know, he's been doing this for a very, very long time. And, you know, eventually he will get tired. So, you know, um, I was recruited by, you know, Alan Griffin and and, and um, Autry, Coach Autry. So um, I wasn't worried about it once I realized that, you know, I, and I, they told me that Autry is going to be the guy taking over. So I wasn't worried. Yeah. What's, what's your, your relationship? Oh, go ahead. I think we're about to ask the same question. Oh, yeah, I was, I was going to ask you, what's your relationship like with him? And is me- that who's been coming to the games? He came with uh two. He came to um one the one at Fordham, if I'm not mistaken, and he came to when we had to play Holy Cross. Him and Alan Griffin came to that one. So they they had both came twice. Um, you know. I, I'm I was kinda, you know, built my earlier relationship with Syracuse with Alan Griffin, um, Coach Griff. And then, you know, um I went to the camp and I was destroying in the camp. And then, you know, I just, you know, they, they went um again. Like you know, in season, so they came to open gyms. I was doing what I do, and then you know, played in the season, and we had a good game against Holy Cross, but we beat them up in the end. And then, you know, me and him just talk, you know, just regular conversations, you know, checking up on me, making sure I'm good, and that's pretty much it, though. I think a lot of people, uh, fans of Syracuse, are are probably wondering if they're still going to be seeing some zone defense. So, two part question: one. 
Do you know anything about whether or not the, the zone defense is going to continue in two? How do you like playing zone, or do you prefer man? I mean, playing play zone has its positives and negatives. Um, and Syracuse is one of those schools that's kind of known for two things. Like when you see Syracuse, you think about – and they start to play, you think about shooters, and you think about two, three zone. Like it's one thing that just comes with Syracuse. So I don't think they're going to completely just throw it away. I don't think that's ever going to happen. But I know that, you know, they probably will, like, go – sometimes they'll go man, sometimes they'll go zone. Or maybe they just might just keep his zone and, and stick with what Bayham has. Because even though he's retiring, he's not, like, just leaving and never coaching. He's still going to be around. He's still going to be – you know, he told me he's still going to be around, still going to be active in, in the, you know, the basketball and, and, and coaching. But he just won't be, like, the head coach anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how do you feel do – you, do you prefer zone or man, just as a personal preference? I prefer a man because mm-hmm. sometimes, like, with zone, things happen and people just, like, like start pointing fingers, like, oh, um, you this, you that, you didn't rotate right, and it's just, like, off. So, man, it's like you guard yours, you get in help, you know, you rotate the right way, and you play that. It helps you play as a team, but, you know, you still got to still gotta guard. Yeah, yeah, well said. I, I, I'm kind of the same way. I mean, I don't play any defense, period, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, uh, <laughs> that's kind of just how I feel about it. But – um, for me personally, uh, you know, growing up as a kid in New York, Syracuse was never necessarily my my favorite team, uh, but always like a team. Obviously, we watched just growing up in New York. And another reason um, is, is because Syracuse is, is just a school that's synonymous with having a big run in March Madness. And that was always what Syracuse was known for showing up when it mattered most. What are your memories watching Syracuse growing up? I know you're younger than me, so maybe it might not be as good of an answer, but what do you remember? Like, who are some of the Syracuse guys you you, you watched growing up that that, that you liked? Um, with Syracuse, like, when I, I used to watch, like, when I was really, really young. And, you know, basketball used to come on, and, and I used to see Syracuse. And it would be like, you know, like, everybody was just playing, man, and then they were playing zone. So it was, it was, it was different for me. But, uh... You know, I watched a couple. I, I know, obviously, Carmelo Anthony is just like a, a legend, and you know, um, for them and his ability to shoot. Um, watching Coach Gary too play alongside him was definitely someone that you know people don't really talk about as much mm-hmm. as they should. But um, you know, those are some people that you know I, I definitely you know look up to. So mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, Jay. What about Syracuse makes it, or sorry? What about Elijah's game makes him a, a good fit for Q, for the Cuse? I mean, he just explained it well. He said, when you think about Syracuse, you think about shooters and zone defense, right? And in the zone, you don't have that much of a responsibility because there's five guys working together at the same time, right? Like he said, when you're playing man, everybody's responsible for their own. But if you're talking about sh- the shooters that came through Syracuse, I don't think they've seen one like him yet. I, I mean, agree. I'm just being honest. I... I now have been watching Syracuse for longer than both of y'all. And I'm telling you, I've seen a lot, but consistent, just, I don't know. Yeah. You you had guys like Andy Routens, Shooter. You know, Buddy Bayheim was a was a sniper more recently. I think even Joe Girard, obviously a guy chopping those yeah. sniper as well. But I, I, I'm not just saying this because he's our guy. <laughs> he's right here. I truly don't think as, as good of – a shooting program as Syracuse has been, they haven't had a they haven't had a pure shooter like this in a long time. Yeah, and I would agree with that. And the reason why, just going off of the three guys you just mentioned, they can't put it on the floor the way he can. You understand? That's what makes his shooting ability dangerous. Because if you don't close out, you know it's going up. But if you do close out, I don't have to pass it. Mm-hmm. You understand? He could he can create off the bounce. He's getting other guys' buckets that's not that good. You know, he, he'll he get a bench play of five five to eight points that's coming in because he's going to attack. So he's not just solely relying on the shooting ability, whereas other shooters, if they missing and things are not working, what do you get from them? Mm-hmm. Sure. Not much, not much. Yeah. That's just being honest, you know, and I ain't talking to none of those guys. I'm just being yeah. straightforward with it. Guys don't do <clears> – <throat> more than their their specialty yeah was well i know you're again you you, i i don't even have 
recollection of Carmelo Anthony at Syracuse because I was too young. So I know you definitely don't have any recollection of him there. But was he an inspiration at all in you picking Syracuse? Like being a guy also from New York, staying in the state of New York and representing them from a college level and going on to the NBA. Like, was did you think of Melo at all in this process? Um, I talked to Melo a couple of times um, about Syracuse and about like you know the, the the environment and the fans and the people outside of it, like the grads that had graduated and the love that you get from just going there and how genuine people are when you get there. And so when I went out there for the visit. You know, everyone was so genuine, so nice. And even people that I didn't even know that I was a recruit, they just still treated me like, you know, with a, a nice heart. So I, I really appreciate it. But nice community. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and, and, and knowing that he's, the you know, the person that he became to be and the work that he put in, the fact that he won him a, a, a title is like is like crazy. So, you know, to, for me, growing up, watching Melo, it's like, okay, that's like inspiration. But now to be going to his school and he's literally talking to me, coming to games, you know, um, telling me about like history about the school and like, you know, what what he went through there is definitely, definitely inspiring. Shout out to Carmelo Anthony. I love Melo, man. That's one of my favorite dudes, man. That's That's straight up. Outside of basketball. Mm -hmm. Already know. It's family. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. No, amazing player. Um, what uh? Do you, what's the plan um, as far as uh, NIL goes? Because I know that's an, an absolute integral part of college basketball, college athletics in general these days. Did Syracuse have any NIL opportunities there that maybe enticed you more than other programs? Um, you know, I I know that there's gonna be NIL opportunities based off the school, based off you know um I how. I went on a visit and they were um, one of the guys, one of the teachers was talking to me about like, you know, the opportunities that they get and, and how, you know, the marketing, the market works and, and, and how like, you know, social media is changing for just the, the world. And at Syracuse, like, you know, every, all, all Syracuse really has is Syracuse basketball. And that, that whole community is definitely like, you know, big on Syracuse players. So when you go there, the NIL is going to, is going to be there, like, you know, regardless of, whoever you are. So there's people on the, on a team that aren't really playing much, but they're still getting IL deals just because they're from Syracuse. And then, you know, people like Judah and Joe Girard are making their fair share of money just by, you know, like doing little things. And, you know, I know when I get there, my, my, I'll have my opportunities. That's great. So the first man through the 15th man on the roster, everybody is good. That everybody. says a lot. Yeah. It does. What, what's, um, what's your relationship like with Judah Mintz? He's having – well, I mean, their season just ended, but he's having – had an incredible season for them. What's your relationship with him like? Um, me and him are, are cool. I wanted to visit, and – well, when I, first I went to the camp, and I seen him, and I was playing against him. And first, our first encounter wasn't really good. Not in a bad way, but we were – you know, we're both competitors. So I was playing in open runs with the team. And, you know, he was on my team at first, and he just wasn't passing me the ball. <laughs> I was like, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know who this guy is. Why he feels so entitled to just look me off like that. Like, <laughs> Who are you? Do you not know who I am? My we, name is we, Chopper. We ended up losing, and then, you know, they went on, and I was like, nah, I'm still off this one. So I stayed off, and they picked someone up. Like, okay. And then I was like, they, they, they won, so I wanted to be on the next game, so I wanted to go against them. So, you know, we, he was going. He scored a couple of times. I had a couple of shots. And the team was looking at me because I was like, you know, you know me. I I, I know I talk shit <laughs> as, as a player. I'm not talking mm-hmm. shit wrong. Right. Um, so, you know, me and him going back and forth and going at it. So, you know, he kind of like was like, like, felt disrespected because he's like this recruit coming here trying to, you know, take over or whatever, whatever. But, you know, after that, you know, we talked, we dad we dad set it up and everything was cool. And then, what came back from my official and you know we just hit it off we was chilling together talking um you know we i watched their practice watched like some things that they do on just a day-to-day basis had one to the game who they i forgot who they played they played someone but they had one so everything was cool that they, they had one they got the dub and then that was pretty much it but me and him are cool for mm-hmm. sure nice 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 yeah i love I like, this too i like that a lot but I mentioned this before, Syracuse, like you committing to Syracuse is obviously a major accomplishment in your life. It's incredible. 
Um, but knowing what I know about your relationship with your dad, I can only imagine like how proud he was in that moment. The second you committed talk about for our audience, maybe who doesn't know just like about how your relationship with your dad, you know, how he inspires you to do better and what that moment was like for him when you finally committed. I mean, ever, ever since I was like nine or 10, it's just, it's just been me and my dad, like, you know, going to the gym, you know, like, you know, I, I don't really have, uh, a mother figure in my life. It's just me and him. So, you know, I'm um, just going to the gym. Um, you know, the stuff that we went through when we were just going from home to home, you know, just him, no matter what was going on, he still made sure that he rebounded for me. He was there for me. He would stay strong. He found ways to, you know, figure stuff out. And, you know, me being young, I looked up and I always looked up to him because like how strong he was. And, you know, I know people with obviously situations that, you know, don't really have father figures. So for him to be, someone to step up and take that role and, and, and still sacrifice, you know, things that he could have been doing to, you know, make sure that I was in the gym, to make sure that I was getting better, to I was getting stronger. You know, I really appreciate it. So now it's just like, you know, every day I go out and I play, I wear number one on my chest because one that's his birthday, um, August 1st. And so I just, you know, I play for him and I make sure that I work as hard as I can to make sure that, you know, eventually I could give back to him and say thank you for, you know, everything that he's done. Shout out Ty, man. Incredible human being. It's amazing. I love that answer. That's really, really well said. Well, what was, uh, what was like the first thing he said to you right after you committed? Like, was there a moment of celebration or was it right back to the gym to get back to work? Nah, he was, he was definitely excited. You know, as soon as I, you know, picked up the hat and I gave it to him, he put it on and I, you know, I had unzipped. He was just like, you know, he had a moment where everything kind of just flashed out at him. So if you see the video, you kind of see him crying. And then, like, you know, he was just Nah, like, I saw that shit. I did. I did. So, you know, he was like, he was tight, too, because he was like, damn, I look so like that. Nah, <laughs> this is what I'm like, Ty like, is crazy. Nah, that was funny, though. Because he, he like, realized when he said Siri, he realized. He, and then he started, like, fake tearing yeah. up for a second. I remember that. Crazy. Yeah. You look at the video, he was, like, like smiling. And then I, I look, he, he puts his head down, he comes back up, and he's tearing up. He just like you know excited, and he just you know he grabbed me up. He was like, because you know there's kids there. I want to take pictures and a lot of stuff going on. So he just like you know I love you. I'm proud of you. You know we did it, and I was like facts. And then, you know he just went on and you know was around, but you know he de he definitely was. I know he was proud, and he told me for you know he still tells me to now how proud he is of me. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, and that happened in a month two two months ago. Facts. Yeah, just, I, still hype. Amazing. I, I was fire, lucky enough. Fire, fire. I, I was lucky enough to talk to your dad for a little bit, and you know, talking to him, it, it makes sense that his son, you know, turned out to to be the way that you are because it's uh, he he's a class act, and uh, I, the, the the happiness I have for both of you, like knowing that this commitment is official and you picked Q's is is just amazing, but. Talk about other inspirations, NBA players you grew up idolizing and guys you want to be like. Um, you know, Curry is obviously one person that, you know, everyone's like, oh, Steph Curry, Steph Curry. But, you know, um, you know, just guys that I like to, like, I like to add different pieces to people's games to mine. So, like, you know, little things that, like, Luka does with his, you know, his off rhythm and, and being a big guard. Yeah. You know, Devin Booker and his ability to get to, you know, first, second, and third level, um, you know, uh, Clay Thompson and his ability to just have, like, you know, catch and shoot and just have a quick trigger. It's like a lot of players. You know, one player that people don't really talk about, Reggie Miller, his ability to move it out the ball and, and how he, you know, he, he he definitely was an amazing shooter. So there's definitely guys in the league that I would say, you know, from past and from present that I look up to. But, you know, for me, it's just about myself and make sure that, you know, I'm the best shooter I could be. And and then one day being the best shooter to ever shoot the ball. I yeah. love that. I did not expect you to say Reggie Miller. That's a good answer. I mean, he killed, he's a Knicks killer, but that's right. it. That's a really good answer. <laughs> right. I kind of see that. I kind of see that in you too. Like, obviously the jump shot, like we know that that can, we can compare, but like the dog mentality, mm -hmm. Reggie Miller was a dog. He definitely was. He was a dog. So that, I love that you said that. Even as a Knicks fan, I love that you said that. What's uh What's the best piece of advice you think you ever got? The best piece of advice. Um. Because th there's there's kind of two 
I don't really know how to word it, but you know, there's two pieces of advice that I've got, you know, throughout my time. And one is like, you know, no matter who believes in you, none of that really matters. It's just about you believing in yourself, you know, and people, people, people will say, Oh yeah, I was there for you. I believed in you when you, when you're winning and when, you know, everything's going good, but when everything was, everything's going bad and, and, you know, nothing's going your way, people just end up disappearing. So, you know, that's one thing that I've learned just like as living life, even this season when we were, you know, started off six and nine and everybody was like, oh, Hayes this year isn't, isn't going to do it. And now we're in the championship by the, you know, go against Stepanak and everybody's like, oh yeah, Hayes, 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 this, Hayes, that. And before everybody was like, oh, Hayes not even going to, you know, make it past the first round. So, you know, just learning lessons, like in, in terms of just making sure that you believe in yourself and, you know, you, you continue working hard, you keep, um you know, giving the grace of God, just, you're going to be all right. And then the second one is just, you know, don't listen to people's, um, the way people say things, listen to their message. So, you know, sometimes your coach may yell at you, he may scream at you, but the things that he's saying to you is, is deeper than just his voice and his tone. So, you know, sometimes at times I'm in the gym and my dad's just yelling at me, screaming at me to leave my father do. But, you know, I, 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 sometimes I get caught up listening to him yelling, so I try to be defiant and pull it down. But, you know, um, listening to actually what he's telling me to do and, and leaving it up and, and, and keeping my father, do, keeping, keeping my cookie and, and, you know, making sure my feet are right, you know, it, it's brought me to where I am today. So those two pieces of advice is, is what I could say. I like that. Thanks. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah, the follow, follow through is better. You got to gotta hold that follow through always. Facts. <laughs> Can we switch gears a little bit and talk about Hayes? You said we were six and nine, and, and what are we right now? I think because I don't actually know. That's what I'm asking. But I know. <laughs> I know we won 13 in a row. Yeah, we definitely did. I, I believe we're like 20. Is he the? Is he the 20 and? I don't know. I don't know actually. I can't. It's 21 and nine or 20 and 10. I think it's 21 and nine. If I'm not mistaken, because after nine we have. I don't think we lost after nine. Right. That I think the last game was Scanlon. Yeah, that after was it. Went on 13. So, Right, so I think we're twenty-one and nine. So, talk about Sunday. What are your expectations for Sunday, and what is Sunday? Talk to the people. Well, first of all, I know some people don't count it. Some people do, but when I was a freshman, we won a championship during COVID, right? Yep. I, I got a ring for it. Facts. I got a ring for it as well. Then we got last year: Toby Walker, DJ Big Three, Tariq Foster. Ian Jackson, myself, Jaden Williams, Mike, Michael, you know, Junior. We had a we had a great team, Danny and my guy. So you know, we had we had a great team, and, and we end up like you know just destroying everyone, you know. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? So that that that's like you know for sure counts as championship, no matter what anyone, no one could take that away from us, right? And now this year it was like, well, they don't got Toby, they don't got DJ, they don't got Ty. Ian and Elijah be able to do it again. And now, you know, season started off rough and they're like, oh. They everybody like, left. Everybody laughing. Like, oh, <laughs> they don't got Toby, they don't got DJ, they don't got Ty. You know, on top of the fact that last year I didn't make any teams. Not first team, not second team, not third team. And, you know, I, I was more than some people that were on those lists. Not to say anyone's name, but, you know, I took it personally. So Nah, facts is facts. Those is not... Yo, people lie, numbers don't. Right. So, you know, I, I took it. I just like, you know, I was like, I bet, cool. Come back this year. And now we're in championship, starting off slow. We, we came together as a team. And now we're here. So now I just want to be able to say that, you know, if we, if we didn't, if we didn't do three in a row, at least we could say we did two for sure. Back to back, right? Back to back. And now we got Stephen Knight. We got Bull, great player. Danny, great player. You know, they, they, they compete. And then they gonna they gonna definitely come at us, but we gonna we gonna fire right back. Mm -hmm. Right. How do you see this? How do you see this game going? Only reason why I'm asking is because I actually stayed after. I saw you there. You stayed, and we and you watched the Christ the King step in that game, in the final four, and the final score was like forty nine to forty three. I'm I'm just saying. Hey, we got you know me and Adam bump heads a lot, and I and that's not like you know. Anything that that I'm, I'm gonna sit here and lie about, like we're not we're not always cool, we're not always on good terms. But one thing I say about Adam is Adam could put the ball in the goddamn basket. 
Right. Ian Jackson is, I don't care what nobody said, he's probably the number one player in 2024, regardless. There you go. So we got regardless Ian, of class. Regardless, we got Ian Jackson on our team. And then you got the best shooter in the country. There we go. So they they gonna have to score as much as we score. I don't think they're gonna be able to do that. See, that's what I said, but people beg to defer. So we got some money lines out there. I want everyone to go for Stephen Act so that when we win the gym, everybody <laughs> and they head down and I believe. Every shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's the funniest part, Chopper? Because you know when you, when when the, when the audience fi- figures to themselves that the game is over, they don't even stay to the end. <laughs> <laughs> so you saw the Christ the King people walking out yesterday. Oh, it's crazy. So I can't, exactly. I can't. That moment in the game where somebody gets fouled or something happens, and I look up and I start seeing people walking out. I start seeing the kids on the bench with their heads down. That's the moment that I'm gonna be waiting for. I'm like, yeah, and I'm gonna go to the end. And I'm gonna say we did it because you know that's my brother. That you know we we've been working hard for this moment. Right. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's a very honest, genuine answer. I appreciate that. Do you think though, in the beginning of the season, obviously, like you guys even said it yourselves, like it, things didn't didn't necessarily go the way you guys expected them to in the beginning. You think this season maybe more than others tested you a lot mentally? Yeah, for sure. Because there, there were times where I was like, oh, you know, this team, I don't know what's going to happen. There was times where I played games and I was just so frustrated. Times where I didn't I didn't, I didn't want to, like, you know, talk to my teammates. Times where I didn't want to go to school. Like, I was just, like, mentally tired of just, like, you know, um, losing and, and not feeling like we was playing together and a whole bunch of stuff going on. And, you know, we, you know, sat down together as a team. We talked. We went and practiced. We competed. And we realized that, you know, teams are going to score 40, 50. But if, if we score 60, 70. If we play together and we score on 70, 80, then are they going to really be able to get to us? So, you know, we got a guard, of course, but they got to guard us too. Yeah. I like that. The a fact. Well said. I like that. All right, man. We, we, we've, I, I can't wait to watch this game. I'm going to be there Sunday night to watch this one go down. Uh, be- best of luck, man, and c- congrats on all the accomplishments. We we can't wait to watch the rest of your basketball journey unfold. And don't forget, you said, of friend. you said it yourself, best shooter in the country, best. but second best shooter on this podcast right now. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Go subscribe. Peace.